Everybody and welcome to Live and Let's Dice Live Painting Edition, where we will be having a nice, chill stream. You join me here at the head of what will hopefully be a nice, chill stream, and I know that it will be a good one. 
because not only do I have some amazing models to paint, I think that I fixed the audio for my uh, microphone as well. So even though it doesn't sound any better, unfortunately, because it's still just a headset microphone, it will hopefully be a lot louder than it was last time. Um, I've got uh, amazing people that I can already see in the chat here. I'm incredibly tired, but I'm at that lovely stage where I feel like I'm kind of drunk and it's... I'm just riding that wave. I've got a nice view when you've got like... Because um, you guys know that I film that side of the room, right? So obviously I've got the light source, the main light source of my room coming in uh, behind me. Terrible decision thinking about it. I'm actually redoing the whole of the studio at some point in time. I'm going to look into uh, turning this into a more sort of like cozy den style thing rather than being a, a white room. The reason being that I chose white walls because I thought the LED lights would be better to just light the room for me. But I realized I want a fixed lighting thing now. I want it to just look a certain way, have a theme for it. Um, so yeah, I have the light source in front of me for a change and actually being able to have my eyes... I was going to say burned down, but it's still a very grey day here in Wales. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, at least I have natural light. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and I've got this lovely light here as well. And the light that's off of my forehead, because the uh, HD web camera <laughs> that's on here cannot cope with this amount of egg, mate. Uh, I'm in a good mood. Uh, I've... I've um, uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you guys this. Uh, at the moment, I've like started counselling at the moment, and I've been going there for a couple of weeks, a few months actually now, thinking about it, and just feeling a lot better for it. Um, can't say, I, I can't recommend it enough. I know that it isn't for everyone, but for me, it's working. And I'm going through sort of like chatting about concepts of gratification at the moment. And I finally started to internalize that message. Very grateful. Not that I was an ingrate before, but I'm very grateful for the people, the friends that I've made, my family members that I still have, and my colleagues, my job, the people that I get to share the stream with here, you lovely people here. And it's just lovely. I, I, I'm, I'm managing to encapsulate that image and use it. Feels warm, feels good. Exactly what I need. Because the weather ain't fucking doing anything, is it? I mean, it's, it's what's going on in the UK at the moment. Seriously, man. Apparently, we've had all of our um, uh, bloody uh, rainfall for April in the first nine days, <laughs> based on similar trends. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's just so silly. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm internalizing warmth and love. I'm gonna keep passing it outward onto the lovely people who join me here as well and just keep spreading it around. Like warm butter on toast, baby. Let's get it going. Let's spread it all around. Let's spread it all around. And we'll do that by first saying, um, let's, let's say hello to all the lovely people that have joined us here today. X, how's it going, my friend? First comment straight out of the gate. I'm gonna start doing this now. But first comment gets a special little bonus. And your little bonus, by the way, for today's stream is that you get to choose the color combinations for the first knob that we're gonna be painting, which we'll do in a minute. So have a little think on that. You can have two, three colors. I'd, if we if we if we keep it to three colors, it at least make, makes it a bit easier for me. But if you want to go crazy, go for four colors and bat and burger, and you can do whatever you want. But that's your privilege, my friend. So you've won the uh, competition that I've only just informed people is it in existence. <laughs> Super Armstrong is in the chat. Is a massive supporter. Can see you have been here for a long old while, my friend. And big love to your family. And also. You're wearing your Live and Let's Dice jumper as well. If I had a dooter, I'd be dooting it right now in honor of you. So um, what I'm going to have to do instead is fashion a dooter. Uh, they don't call me the A-team. I can't remember who the person was in the A-team that usually made all the fun stuff. This is the dooter, by the way. It is a, a paint pot holder. Doot, thank you very much. Thank you very much for representing the channel. Big love, big love, my friends. Hope you're doing well. I, I, I love the fact that you bought a Live and Let's Dice jumper. Um, I'm going to be... Um, I need to start... You guys know this by now. If you're new here to the channel, then hello, by the way. Um, if you're not, you know by well, well by now even, um, that I'm not that great when it comes to doing business. I am the business, and I know that now. But I ain't great when it comes to doing business. So um, I often 
do lots of uh, things like, for example, get amazing designs made for a load of t-shirts and then forget to promote them anywhere. So if you do have the time, <laughs> you want to go and have a look check them out uh, the new design that we've got at the moment on the main website is by uh, an artist called richie lee good friend of mine amazing painter hobbyist carrie the paid actress has just walked past the window here and she just did this face to me as she walked past so i can tell it's been a good day she's staring at the front door she's probably thinking to herself is the door leaking again i'm just gonna rate I, I, i'm gonna come back to the world in a minute i'm just gonna narrate what she's doing as she comes in she's coming up the drive She's got an amazing backpack that I bought her a couple of uh, years ago, made out of a recycling crash mat. She's in the house now. She is officially safe, ladies and gentlemen. She has made it home. Congratulations and applause is all round for Kerry, who has made it home safe and sound. There she is. Is she going to pop her head in and say hi? I can hear the door going. Is she going to at least open the door? You're not on camera, by the way. Remember, it's a different angle. You going to come and say hi? She said... Not on your fucking life, I believe, <laughs> she said. No, she didn't say that. She said something else. She said uh, she's busy. She's probably uh, carrying a, um, a, a poo scooper to do the cat tray with. Or she's just absolutely knackered from work and doesn't want to do any social stuff. All touched out. I'm completely fine with that as well. Anyway, back on track. Lee, my favourite meat encased in pigskin, aka a sausage. How's it going, my friend? Another big member, another big supporter. Count Poros here as well. Missed the uh, the start since I just noticed the announcement. Oh, well, I'm glad you made it, Count. I'm glad you made it. It's, it's more of a countdown when you're not here because we basically just bide in time until you arrive. Ryan, you absolute legend. How's it going here? And yes, you should also encapsulate the term sausages and start using it more in your lexicon. Laced chemist, my man Jules, my man Lace. How's it going, my friend? Good to see you. Hope that you're okay. Um... Ahoy Jules and the uh, Living Let's Dice family from Red Infernal. Hello, my friend. Sebastian, good afternoon. Um, Michelle is in the chat. Hello, Michelle. 12.45 a.m. from Australia. Come on now. What are you doing? Why are you burning the candle? <laughs> Why are you burning the candle watching this egg over here? So, well, to be fair, though, if this is to send, send you off to sleep, We'll keep it calm. You've got some nice music in the background. We're going to be painting some orcs and some knobs. And I'm just going to do that stream of consciousness, absolute Billy. And you can just fall asleep to that if that's what you need. Some people have said that to me before. They've fallen asleep to my videos. And I don't take offense to it because of the fact that... I mean, I could take offense to it and be like, they see it's boring. But it's background noise. It's distraction. It's just providing them that sort of very white noise, as it were, to allow them to just chill and get on with stuff. Like I'm... Like I said before, I'm learning more and more about how certain situations can be made easier by doing certain actions and yeah, using music or TV as a distraction or just having something on in the background to allow you to focus somewhere else. I'm totally on board with that because I do it myself. Although, um, does anyone else find that there's certain types of music that you can and can't listen to when you're like working? Because my job is very like, it's like everyone thinks that my job is like 90% recording but it's 99 percent scripting and writing and researching so i spend a lot of time just sort of in a state of hyper focus which can be very very draining sometimes because well it's it takes a you've got to shut everything out in order to be able to dial in on what you're either researching coming up with the best line coming up with the sort of interesting fact consolidating what you have written down to a manageable piece like I've got it down to a, a fairly fine craft now, but it still does take a lot of effort and energy to really focus in on it. And there's certain types of music that I can't listen to while I'm while I'm writing. I can't listen to rap, for example, and I bloody love rap. I just I can't listen to it when I'm when I'm writing because I end up internalizing what I'm hearing or finding like it's a competing voice inside my head. So I I end up being like. I'm battling against it and I just find it harder. It's not that thing of like, I'll write down what they say, but I think it's more like, I just internalize another voice and therefore it's harder for my own to come out. But on the flip side, I can listen to the heaviest, most techy, widdly diddly metal. Like, 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 I listen to thrash metal, listening to my mate's band, uh, which has an amazing name, by the way, Priest Crippler. So, uh, yeah, he sent me over a few um, live bits of him uh, performing that uh, or do it at his last performance. And I was able to listen to that completely fine. 
Shout out to Nick. Um, oh, is that is that a wrapping of on the door? Is Kerry coming in? Is whoa, whoa, open the door. I could hear I could hear the wait. Oh wait, actually no. I will tell you what, it might be it might be the cats eating because I put a food bob on the other side of the door. If you aren't a cat, say something. Nah, nah it's, too, it's too. Every time I've spoken, there's been a noise. So I know it's you. And now you've stopped doing it, so I know it's you again. <laughs> I actually can't tell. I'm just. I may maybe yelling at a cat. <laughs> well, the handle ain't turning. She, she ain't coming in. Unless uh, the cats have uh, evolved opposable thumbs and can start opening the door. But either way, <laughs> what a chaotic start to a stream. <laughs> Such a chill vibe one. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, uh, where was I going with that? Oh. Who bloody knows? Who bloody even get? Oh yeah, uh, listen to the heaviest mail. So let me know your music recommendations down in uh, the chat below, and I just want to see what other people can and can't work to. Just be interested to know. Um, and that was saying hello to Michelle. Classic. Always a good sidetrack there. Um, thank you, uh, X. The um, the wasn't expecting Jules. Well, now you've got me. You've got me here. Um, not too late, Murphy. No, you are not. Indeed, I'm still catching up on the chat. My God people uh where am i oh sean sean o'burn um sean o'burn is in the chat hello my friend alexi's here as well hello friend Good to see you um it was sunny in sittingbourne until we got ready and started yeah classic right classic classic oh blues and purples oof i do love a combo on that thanks for the do not a problem super charlie here b a lot b a 10 10 do a lot think jules what could this be what could this be charlie can you re can you put into my brain what the thing is i was just talking about there oh ba baracus that was it because we were talking about me performing the duke god damn i'm so behind i'm gonna catch up i'm gonna catch up we'll go with last week's suggestion royal blue main color yellow is secondary well you know what I just happen to have those two right here i'm saying i'm saying x i got you mystical powers right okay um Jenko, oh, Jenko and Lawson are in the chat. Paint the, I'm not gonna. Mm. That's not a bad shout, actually. That could be really fun. No, that's. Is that really dumb? No, that could be quite fun, actually. We sand, we sand down the bike, get it back down, we paint it. Oh, what if we changed it from Carrera to Carrera Wa? That would actually be pretty cool. Anyway, that's another thing for another time. Right. I'm also meant to be getting rid of that bike at some point. I know, sad, right? Um, uh, blah, 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 last week, uh, Charlie Murder. No, I can't recall. We're catching up on um, uh, <laughs> classic, um, <laughs> classic A team knowledge here. Um, busy, busy reading the script for tomorrow. How dare you, Murphy? How dare you? Uh, there's no script. She's a completely organic actress. She loves improv. Oxy, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate you. Warrior, Womp, and Robin M. God, two names, mate. She is due an Oscar one day. What would she? Uh, she'll like, I'll die, and then they'll do a supercut of my life, like Roy the game from Rick and Morty, and then that will be what wins her the Oscar. Jules, an annoying man. With an incredible death. What's the death? Well, you'll have to find out. You have to stay tuned for the next, like, hopefully, at least four years. I don't know why I'm checking my watch to see if it'll tell me when I'm going to die, but <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, I should have an ASMR channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, to be honest, I, I know, hands up, if I did a ASMR channel, it probably would get more consistent viewers than we do doing the, uh, the scattershot approach of a board game channel. If it was just me whispering or just whittering away, maybe just reading old um, gaming scripts from way back in the day, I'll just fish out every single what culture script that I've got, and I've saved all of them, so that then I could just read through them from start to finish. The biggest list ever. A million entries. And that's just the ASMR channel. Record it once, put it on a loop, that's it, done. I, I was tempted, actually. I pitched this to my bosses back uh, when I was working full-time at what culture and the the gimmick was 
um, that we took because we, we obviously do like top 10 and then I put it to top 8 because of the fact that I wanted more um, like word count limit to just play around with without it like becoming too like unwieldy but imagine that imagine like a hundred point list imagine a thousand point list and I pitched what if we did the greatest gaming list ever and did it as a because uh, I think at that point in time there was a five hour cutoff point or a ten hour cutoff point for YouTube videos and I said do the whole ten hours the biggest list ever <laughs> every game <laughs> just and then it doesn't matter you wouldn't even need to like keep it to one topic you just do every game ever the biggest list ever the list itself doesn't matter what the number one spot is technically it's just let's just talk about games for 10 hours <laughs> what is the united states of horror poster this right here it is for the band horror h09909 um if you haven't listened to them before they um you may have actually heard them inadvertently because, weirdly enough, they were picked up and used on an NXT um, uh, premium live event. Maybe three or four years ago, uh, they did a song with Prodigy, but that's not at all what their music is like. Their music is kind of a cross between experimental rap, experimental metal, a fusion in between, and then they just chuck a load of random artists in from all walks of life. like. Their last album that they put out had Corey Taylor from Slipknot doing a guest focus on one. And then they went into like a, a song, I think it's called Feel the Wave or Ride the Wave. And it is so tonally different. Like it was almost like lounge jazz rap for the next one versus the metal core and metal, like rap metal thing that they had in the opening. It's completely bizarre. Amazing band. So much energy. And the best band that I saw by accident, technically, because when we went to Arc Tangent a couple of years ago, they were um, they weren't on the bill. But then two acts pulled out, and they basically said, "Can anyone fill these two spots?" And um, the two bands that did fill them were Horror, and I believe the other one was Big Lad. And Big Lad are another band that are just amazing, amazing fun. If you're into your sort of like noise, if you're into your techno, and if you're into insane insane drummers because it's just two guys one's on a massive synth uh pad where he's got like multiple units constantly just making noise and crazy riffs out of that and then a drummer who is built like an entire rugby team was fused together and then is it called gigamaxing when it's the um the pokemon thing they it just he just looks like that <laughs> amazing good fun Egg lullabies, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Sharky, that was uh, to answer your question on that one. Um, if I need to focus, uh, we're talking to, we're talking about the music that I asked you about to focus. I've masked for so long that I end up having three different things going on in one place to concentrate. A single time, yeah. I stick on ten hours of rain, wind, yeah. See, that's good. Understand about music. Um, you can be consistent on the tempo and tone. It's more of a hodgepodge player, so I can't have. Yeah, that's so true. I listen to full albums because it's like a style or a sound that I get into. Um, I used to live in a place where my house was underground and it was so quiet I had to sleep with rain noises on I was like, oh so it's like one of those things where you hear people in when they go into anechoic chambers when they kind of start freaking out because I, I'm not entirely sure if this is like an urban myth or not but there are I've been into an anechoic chamber which is meant to be like where there's zero dB around you and everyone's like, oh, you can hear your own blood in your ears and stuff like that. I didn't find that so much. I just found that my ears were almost like hurting because of the fact that they were straining to find sound. And I found that I was compelled to, after maybe about like a minute of being in there, compelled to talk because I felt like I was... It, it, I, can't un I can't even describe how uncomfortable it made me feel, but it was just the most uncomfortable that I've ever been. Imagine um, being socially awkward and having to go up uh, to a customer service desk. That level of uncomfort. Just not fun. Um, tricks my brain into thinking, block that shit out and do the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally with you, man. Oh, God, I've... Um... Hey, Vu, how's it going, my friends? Can't listen to anything but white noise when I'm reading. Oh, well, there we go. I used to enjoy your videos background. Thank you very much, Pixie. I'll take it, I'll take it. 
I saw Priest Crippler in my town a while back. Mental grind. There you go, my friend. There you go. Um, Gutilax. My friends sent them over and have listened to their live performances while painting. Okay, I'll check that out. But I don't have work that requires thinking much at the moment, so I can listen to anything. When I was in college, I guess EDM. EDM is a great one as well. And like, if you want to be like, <laughs> pushing glasses, huh? IDM is also really good as well. If it's got some like weird time signatures, it kind of like they fire right in my synapses to keep my brain going. Crazy Doug's in the house as well. Big love. Octavia, how's it going? Listen to Lo-Fi, what mates? Yep, to be fair, uh, Lo-Fi Hip Hop Radio from, uh, what's, the, what's the name of this channel? It used to be called Chilled Cow, and now it's uh, Lo-Fi Girl, obviously. It is just, it's just the best. It's just the best, mate. Dibs the cause of death. I'm just a great, thank you. Thank you, Lawson. At least I know I'm in safe or unsafe hands. I tra uh, trained my kid to sleep through Nine Inch Nails when she was a baby. Now she sleeps through anything. That is nice. Um... Robberoo says, read out old video game manuals. That's a trick, isn't it? Because you've actually got the option then to get the physical media and ha sit in front of like a fake fireplace with the high wing back chair. And you're like, hello, everyone. And welcome to Bedtime Stale uh, Tales. My name is Robert Manuel. And I, oh, I went to uh, Dr. Statham. Need to a ball on that one. Um, you could make a character out of that. You could make a joke out of that. And if people sent you old gaming manuals to read out, you could dedicate it to them, like they did with um, that, that story time thing when the guy from Idols, the lead singer from Idols, did the, uh, the read the bedtime story thing. There, there, there is something in that, Robberoo. I really think that that is a good idea. It's great. It's really, really good. Um, actually, we had zero Kerry news during these. Oh, that, oh, that's very true, actually. I'm not saying that. Well, she was on strike. She was on strike. Um, I'd absolutely love to whispering old what culture scripts <laughs> Nag, I will try I will try I better see Dynasty Warriors on the greatest game I'll, I, it will just be that will be what it is mate there'll be an hour dedicated to the Dynasty Warriors on the greatest list ever made because there's so many fucking spin-offs I really enjoyed the fact that um, Sai has been doing well, Sai has been doing such a great job uh, taking over the reins of Choose Your Own Adventure at the moment, um, because there was like a bit of internal discussion about whether or not it was going to like be iced, because um, once Dan said that he couldn't because of prior commitments, I was, um, for those not in the know, Choose Your Adventure is a show I do over on uh, What Culture Every Tuesday. It's just like a kind of community-driven and inspired list series that I have a blast making. Um, it's been going on for like over 200 episodes now, which is pretty cool. And... Dan said that he had to step away, who was my editor. And I wasn't sure who was going to take it over. And there was talk of it going to like a freelancer, so it would be different each time. And that didn't, it's not what I wanted. I wanted to actually like connect with the editor so we could work together on jokes and skits and trust that person to deliver like a, a like quality product. And then Sai stepped up to it and she's done a fantastic job. Like so funny. The skits that she puts in are brilliant. And she just let me have a run about uh, Dynasty Warriors on yesterday's um, episode because I was talking about game franchises that need to die. And I just said basically that I am the biggest mark for that franchise. Like I bought every single copy, every single spin off. I bought all the tactics ones. I bought all the ones they did when they were uh, Gundam Warriors one. I did the Warriors Orochi. I did all of them. And then people were like uh, in the chat saying, like, Sen Sengoku Basara which is like a, a sp not a spin-off, but it's made by the same company. I owned that. I had the one that was like the Guilty Gear uh, spin-off one they did and the Berserk one. And I'm just like, I've played them all. I played the same game in about a hundred different forms. And I still will buy them because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and so I was just basically going off on one, just saying like, it needs to die because I need to stop playing this game. <laughs> like no, no other reason, it just needs to stop. So that was fun. Am I going to Arc Tangent this year? Great lineup, Mesh. Uh, Charlie, I'm not going this year. Um, basically, I'm on a bit of a festival burnout. I haven't found anything that's really like tickled my pickle at the moment. But I do admit the lineup looks great, and maybe I'll go for like a day. But it's up to uh, to Kerry to see what time we've got off and whether or not we can get over there and back and whatnot. To be honest, I was going to use that. It, it's hard for us as well to go to these um, things because it's hard to find somebody who's looking after the cats. Like, we don't do catteries because they're just so old now. They just kind of need to have constant love and support and care. So, kind of 
leaving for long periods of time. That's why we're getting into camping this year, because it only is like one or two nights away and we can find people who are willing to go and do that. Bye. Oh, um, apologies, is there... Oh, hold on. People saying that ads are coming in now. Right, okay, I've... Uh, okay. Can I change that now while it's live? How do I change that? Hmm. I think it's uh, been set onto an automatic thing here, so apologies for that. Um, right. So, where were we? Where were we oh, ads are coming in. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Hopefully they will be there. Um, I can definitely hear you slowly whispering a Choose Your Own Adventure episode like a sexy mass of flesh. Now go out there and smash it. <laughs> it's the one and only Adam Pachiti. He knew I was streaming, he knew I was chilling, and he thought he'd come along to mess up my vibe. Hi, right, kid. He's a lovely man. Um, how, how, if he's still in the chat, he may, he may have just popped in and then popped out again. Uh, I've been watching some of the Cultaholic stuff on the coverage for uh, WrestleMania and all of the bits around there. I was just smashing it, man. It's brilliant. I tell you what, one of the weirdest things happened the other day when I was um, looking at what I actually watch now. Since I stepped back from what culture, I've ended up watching my friends' channels way more than when I was actually in the bubble. Like, I never watched what culture content when I was working there because it's like being made around me or I had chats with stuff. But like the what culture wrestling podcast, I've got on every single new episode that's put up on there because it's like having your friends who you know talk to you about something that you're passionate about. And it's the same with like going back and watching triple jump stuff. It's the same as watching Cultaholic. It's people that I know doing something that they love and it's really, really fun to see. And also, I just like the fact that Adam Pacitti occasionally just uh, does loads of weird uh, <laughs> stuff and challenges and they're always fun. Um, having a short break, doing something repetitive for work and it's putting me to sleep. I was listening to some very excitable arrest. Whoa, whoa, nerdy goth. Whoa, who's being arrested? Crazy. Go for it, painting. Hello, my friend. How's it good? I want to be 80 and playing Dynasty Warriors 30. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. I'm stealing this manual gimmick idea for my live stream. Kinda a nasty dude. You do that, man. You do that. That's absolutely fair. Somebody should make... Um, somebody should make use of that good idea there. Maybe we'll do a collaboration episode, uh, episode down the, uh, the line if it takes off. Um... Lawson says, after Warhammer Fest, what was the point of other festivals? I mean, yeah, I'd queued enough, mate, at Warhammer Fest. So, yeah. Oh, what a time. What a time it was, eh? What a time it was. Thank you, mate. Miss you. Oh, bless you, Adam. Appreciate you, man. Big love to you. Like, honestly, one of the uh, most charismatic people I've ever met. I, I don't know how he does it. You've got this ability to go into any situation with a... It's, a, it's an air of confidence that just cannot be faked. It's good. It's a good boy. Um... Oh, John's here as well. Hello, mate. Right, okay, so Roboru, that was actually my fault, I believe, on that one there. There's a big, on the live side here, there's an insert ad button and a delay ad button, right? So what I did was I clicked delay because I thought that that mean it would be like, until you press that button again, there won't be any ads. But it turns out that started a 10 minute timer. So what I did was I unclicked that and then more ads happened. So if anything, I bollocked it up even more. So what I'm gonna do is if I go into this settings, live monetization settings. Uh, yeah. Choose how, aha. Okay, cool, I can change it. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Right, that should fix that problem. So what I've done is I've just done it so that I can put in ads manually now, rather than it uh, just randomly dropping them in. So hopefully, that'll be fun. I remember my screen name popping up in an old Live and Let's Dice live stream clip featured on the Choose Your Own episode adventure. Never had an idea good enough for an episode, but hey, I remember, hey, Rob, it's coming. You'll have that moment, you'll sit up in bed in a cold sweat and be like, Eureka, eight animals you can pet in games. Classic bungled whiz, yeah, that is me. That's what I do, mate. <laughs> fail upwards, forwards, downwards. As long as I'm failing, I'm doing all right. Anyway, speaking of, let's move over and uh, start making good on our promises to actually paint something now. So if I click... Uh, if I click this button and then this button... 
Hello. Should be able to see my lovely hands. Oh, do I have to trim my nails? No, I don't. That just made it look like they were really, really long and dirty, but they're not. They're just regular human hands. They're coming right at you. Whoa. Welcome to the 4D experience. Um, right, okay, that was fun. So we can call that a, call that a day. Um, so on the last stream, this is the cheeky little fella that we ended up uh, painting. Um, the kamikaze. Now, we haven't finished him. He needs to go through the edge highlighting process, and he's still a little bit muted. But what I did in between last stream and this, I wasn't happy with the tone of the skin here, because I like orc skin to be bright, like vibrant, like luminescent. So what I did was I went over all of the, um, the other models that we primed up and finished off their skin to a, to a standard that I'm happy with so that we can carry on and do the other bits. Now what this was is for those years at home who would maybe like to do this. It's a super simple recipe of gut ripper flesh over a slap choppy style model. And then all I've done is use auric flesh on the highest points here, uh, two coats of which to build up a solid color. And I'm gonna go over that uh, later on with uh, Ogryn flesh on the top there. And then half Ogryn flesh and half Kislev flesh to give it that nice, green with a bit of a warmy flesh tone but that'll only be used on like the lips tip of the nose and stuff like that i believe that x we agreed that this was going to be uh your model that we were going to do for this one here um did i do all of his metals as well i think i did most of his metals because i wasn't sure about what we were going to do with these ones here and the reason i chose this model for you is because i was thinking that the combination of red and uh, sorry yellow and blue could work well with his armor pad here so we could do like yellow on the inside and blue on the outside i think that'll look quite nice and then we could do a patchwork one maybe yellow blue yellow blue sort of thing on his uh, body piece here so um what i'm going to do is because that's quite two bright colors there that we'll end up with i'm going to do dark trousers and black boots you know me i love doing the black boots but if you want i will do red shoes because uh, red makes them go faster as we all know only question we got to do now is figure out are we going to do half and half on the top of this skull and do half blue half uh yellow or are we going to do uh one primary color there um what's this saying here um how is it wednesday already young Ka hey, Kam kamikaze there you go you've showed up just as i was saying your name about your thing there oh carrie's on the outside of the window you cheek you cheek she won't come in but she's <laughs> oh brilliant she won't come in, but she'll make faces at me uh, on the outside there. Um, so, uh, uh, Neil says, um, am I excited for the Codex preview for the Orcs? Um, I am so excited. The new rules that they dropped for the sort of mechanized army list looked amazing. The uh, the all boys style list of having all boys get five up in vulnerables and getting extra re-rolls from their failed saves if you have more than 10 in a unit like oh get out of here man this is exactly what i want um could wash my green with casadora yellow oh that's a good idea actually ah we'll go for okay x wants just one color over the top fine i can do that before we jump in i can show you the other models that i've worked on since we last spoke last week i finished off the beast boss over here Obviously wrapped his um, massive chopper, his beast chopper over here in barbed wire because clearly that wasn't enough heft for him. So he's done and ready for table. And um, I finished off another model today, which um, is going to be the last model I need to run. A full themed uh, beast snagger list. So uh, that's going to be quite fun. So just like thought to myself i haven't finished painting up like i want to do run themed armies for orcs and so i needed to paint up three models to get them up to 1000 ish points and these are the three that i painted up so we've got the first one was the beast boss second one was uh, a knob on smasher squig and the final one is mozrag scragbad who i'm very happy with how he came up here I just like the. Uh, I know that he's meant to have a big chomper. He's meant to be white, um, and like a shark skin thing. But I wanted to do something a bit different because I magnetized the the top of him. So that means that I can put another beast boss guy on here, 
and he can be riding the big blue, which I've made here. Um, I was pretty happy with how the the transition came out on the Snakebite logo as well. That was all just wet blending using um, using what should we call it? Uh, contrast paints, simple as, and then just a single highlight over the top. So yeah, those were the three models that I painted up since we last spoke. So thank you, Kamikaze. Uh, where was your model? Uh, X. Right. Okay. This is the one that we're going with. And so let's choose a. Am I feeling confident today? I am feeling confident. Let's go for a medium sized layer brush. Let's lick the brush for good luck because everyone knows that's what you're meant to do. And let's start shaking up the pots. I'm going to do Talisar Blue on the raised bits or the in. I'm going to do it in the. Recess is going to be blue. Thank you very much, Lawson. I really appreciate that. I've, uh, I'm, I'm really getting into the groove of just painting a single army, and I'm really, really happy with it. Um, it's all about that slap chop plus, man. Just like get 90% of the work done through contrast paints, and then just layer and highlight one highlight across, and then that is me done. So it's nice and quick. The results pretty slick. Welcome to all of those who are just joining us, by the way. We are now finally starting to paint the orcs. This one here has been recommended by X, who is um, a lovely, lovely fella who has asked for blue and yellow for their color scheme. And I like that a lot. Certified paint like You know it, Cam. You know it. Um, X, if you are listening, if you could tell me what colour, main colour you want the helmet to be, that would be rad. Radder than a rad roach. People excited for the uh, new Fallout TV series? I'm always a bit sceptical when it comes to video game TV shows, but I've not been let down by The Last of Us so far, so... Let's do the bottom, let's do the belly welly on here. And logic dictates that I probably should have painted the under armor first. But we'll get to it. There's a lot of rads. Hey, it's Chris Breezy. It's a good friend. Oh, Talisar Blue, you are such a lovely blue. I need to get the... um. Is it cerulean blue or something like that? Uh, I can't remember. There's a new contrast paint that came out, like the second wave ones. Let's go with blue, yellow will be the top. Blue, yellow will be... Oh, let's go with blue. Yellow will be too much of a beacon of, hey, you guys, look at me. Got you. Cool, right. Well, I said top, then right. Okay, so our paint is helmet blue. The rest of the stuff will make a... Lovely. What is everyone else painting up at the moment? Is there anything on the docket? Anything on the table that's right in front of you as you're watching a man focus to levels beyond that with which he is accustomed to? By the way, if um, you spot uh, Crazy Doug offering advice for painting, you should probably take it. I'm just telling you this now. Man is uh, an absolute demon when it comes to painting. He's building something at the moment, which seems to be very interesting indeed. We're in a little, like, um, it was originally a Mordheim group. And uh, then one day we woke up. Well, Dougie, you made the group, changed the name, and now we don't know which game we're playing, because it was just called Mordheim before. Now it doesn't have a name, but he's building stuff. He's sending us pictures of terrain. And everything leads me to believe that he's setting up for one hell of a big Space Hulk crusade. And 
I am very keen to be a part of that. No painting at the moment. Just oh, you're rigging a character anime uh, animation for work. That's cool. Can you talk about what you're um, you're working on, or is it under NDA? Or that's fascinating, though. My main painting is my nails. Ah, oh, I I live for Instagram posts that show crazy painted nails. It's just like um, there's an Instagram account that basically goes over the top with it, and the last one that I think I saw from them was they turned the nails into tiny air like a uh, chip or fries french fries fryers and they had little chips and french fries in them it was crazy and i was just like these are so impractical and yet at the same time can't find a cooler example of that just glanced over and I'm pretty sure I misread that so I need to check that in a second after I've just put this on. X says I'm painting the toilet bowl. Don't have anything to paint. I'll leave that for the missus. Yeah, to be fair, like she is incredible. Like, um, I saw a post that she put up earlier today. I think it was just like a little bit of promotional advertising and I was just like, what the actual hell The detail and the the expressions that she can get out of um, like characters and animals is just beyond crazy, man. If you want to link, by the way, X, just chuck it in the chat. People, please go check it out because it's just just amazing. <laughs> there are no other words to describe it. I had to explain several times at work why I would have a technical thumb from testing paint to airbrushing. Yeah. I'm the same but with the tongue. I've got a nasty habit of um, cleaning it. I always dip my brush, wipe my brush, and then try and get the point back. And I'm sure that most people do that, to be fair. But it's just, it is quite bad because sometimes I'll forget to wipe off all the excess paint and I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> my dummy hurts. Okay, then, you crazy so we are using imperial fist yellow contrast because the pigmentation of it is just incredible um it's not as it doesn't provide as much recess shading as other contrasts do but when you are using a slap chop equivalent it's it does get those really nice highs in there like i know it doesn't look like much here it doesn't look super vibrant We'll bring that up in a minute. And as everyone knows, painting yellows can be a bloody nightmare. So speed painting them like this. Wow. You're saving my time, you're saving my life. I'm saying. And it is here that I definitely, definitely should have done the shirts and buckles and belts because I do not have a steady hand. This is most likely to end in disaster. So what I've tried to do with this is do on it, if you look at his chest from the underside there, I've tried to recreate Claptrap from Borderlands. Uh, you can see him. Like a magic eye puzzle. <laughs> that's, what I've, that's what I've tried to do with that. <laughs> it's a lovely colour combo, by the way, X. It works really well with these... Um, with the nice vibrant green skin that we did. I should now have the main bits of armor blocked out and we can start going into it bit more once it's dry. So what we'll do is while that's drying is we'll sort out like the belts and buckles, t-shirt, all that jazz. Yeah, look at that. It's just look at that. Just a quick bit of colour. Make some pop. But because of the fact it's quite a bright 
top player here. This would be a really good combo for Blood Bowl, actually, that, wouldn't it? Yeah, that looks nice. Um, we should do Cygore Brown for the belt buckles and straps. I may go for a classic, just because I need to keep them uniform in some respect. So I may just do brown trousers and black boots. Colour of the t-shirt, though. You could probably go for, like, a tan colour or a dirty, light brown. You could get away with just washing that with seraphim sepia and that would look like a sort of like crusty, well-worn shirt. Yeah, I'll give that a try actually. If it doesn't work, we can always go over it with something else. Right, so what do I need then from the old paint tray? I need all grunt of fur, Cygore Brown, Black Templar, which I've got all grunt of fur, Cygore Brown, Templar, so we can do all of that. Skeleton Horde for the belts, uh, for the wraps here. So it's only the shirt that I need to do. I uh, don't, don't know actually. Cygo Skeleton Horde might be a bit too, uh, too sex. I'm going to go grab oh, Seraphim Sepia. Oh my god, my bones. Oh, 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 oh. I went for a run today and. Um, I did yoga last night, and no, the yoga doesn't sound very, very punishing, but this is yoga for climbers. I swear down, she'll deny this until she dies, but I swear down that just before the um, session started, Kerry looked over at me and smiled, an evil smile that she knew what she got me into. Anytime I've um, had a colour scheme, I've always gone to that. My dad once set up a football team when I was a kid as part of the Royal British Legion. I got to choose one of the kits and chose royal blue and yellow and loved it ever since. That is very nice and very sweet, actually. Good memory. Right, okay. Straight out the pot. No diluted. Yeah, that was my great death from, um, <laughs> we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? Uh, you're probably going to need two coats, maybe, of that. We're going to want to see any real distinction on it. But, you know what, actually? I reckon two coats of that is probably about the same as um, Agrax Earthshade, really. Although, saying that, that side definitely does seem to have gone on a little better over here. Just realised as well, a gaping hole in his uh, skin over here. That I've not done properly. What a fool! What a buffoon! So now it looks like a really dirty, crusty work shirt that he had on. Yeah, we'll let that dry and then another coat of that. That'll probably get it looking real nasty. Cats are just throwing themselves down the stairs. I assume because Kerry's gone to the kitchen. Hmm, maybe actually the Seraphim CP is a bit too light for this. However, we will persevere. We'll do two coats. See what happens. That's fine. I mean, the colours that we've chosen as well are so so vibrant that it does pull the... I know, I've missed the skin thing there. Bad times, mate. Bad times. Right. Uh, do, 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 do. While that's doing, we'll do the, the trousers next. So, all grand fur... And then we can keep experimenting and keep um, practicing how to do bones well using wet blending. So that would be, if we can get that down pat, that would be fantastic. Uh, 
Now there's the dirty trousers we like. Paul Gruntaferro as well I find is quite forgiving. There's a lot of like um, first edition range contrast paints that were not so. They were too vibrant, too sludgy. And often you'd end up with very streaky looking stuff that pooled in the wrong areas. Just never looked right, quite right. I really appreciate um, everyone who's popping by today. It's lovely to be able to do something a bit different. It's lovely to not feel like I've got to constantly be on. I get to have a lovely chat with other creative minded people. And if you are just chilling out there, having a look, then good on you. Just hope you're doing all right. More on the front of that. Probably should make use of the bloody painting handle, shouldn't I? There we go. That's the real secret to um, getting the most out of contrast. It's not to just blob it on and hope that it will do all the work for you. But it's just to move with speed and confidence when it is on so that you can get the most out of its pooling abilities as it were right uh, do i want to do yeah, i'll do cyborg brown next on all the other belt buckles see that as this as the um seraphim sepia is drying it is giving us that sort of like crusty work shirt vibe which does look quite nice Yeah, boy, it's looking real nice. Then we put some layers on the top of that as well. Ooh, it's going to sing. Going to sing, my friends. Uh, Saigal Brown. Ah, oh, Murphy, man. It's absolute pleasure. I, I love being able to interact with people who've helped support the channel. And find like minded individuals who are just into either like wargaming or painting or just board games or just or video games. And it's just that I don't get to do it as much as you'd think in my line of work. Especially now working from home. Definitely miss the office environment. And even though this is still technically me talking at you, it is very it's a very nice dialogue because you've got people dropping in dropping out coming in with good news about what's going on with them at the end of the day if you can also get a model painted out of it too fantastic My biggest fear using these dark contrasts when you're next to light colored elements. Okay, the that's done, that's done. We'll do cycle brown on this this as well because then I hopefully later on if I've got enough time, I'll show you my favourite thing to do, which is painting leather bits using Mournfang Brown, Rhinox Hide, and Steel Legion Drab such a fun thing to just sort of add the weathered look onto flat pieces of leather like that. Uh, is that technically a, a metal? It is, yeah. Come back to that then. Right, scan, Jules. Scanning around. Any other belts and straps? Yes, we've got two up there. Yes, we've got these ones joining on. Cool. Right. Then we've got his wee little booties. Wee little booties coming on. Uh, can I get up there without messing everything up? Can't 
kinda was the answer to that. That's okay, so we'll get that with an edge highlight. Right, so belts and straps done there. We're gonna do the wraps on his arm there and up there, which I've just poked like an absolute bloody idiot. I'll do his teeth. His gun and stuff I'll do off camera. Like all the metals I'll sort out later. Skin is gonna annoy me, but I'll have to do that later as well. I think it's time to try and have a fun at wet blending these horns. Let's go for it. Let's do it. So what we're gonna do. Last time we worked up from Cygor Brown and we went to Skeleton Horde. Now I think that it gave us a fairly decent result. It's a bit darker than I'd like. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. On these bits here. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to do Cygor Brown there very lightly and then pull it straight up with uh, Skeleton Horde. See what the effect is there. We may end up with a lighter horn overall. That would be quite nice. So, we're just going to do a tiny ring. Like that bit. Along here. Maybe I'll make it a bit larger because it is lighter than Cycle Brown. Uh, I won't do the other side yet. We'll do it one corner at a time. And that's it, touching on all sides. And then we'll quickly move over to Skeleton Horde. Load up the brush. And then start at the... Actually, no, we're going to clean the brush. So I realise that that is not what I wanted to do. Load up the brush now that's got a slight bit of water to make it even runnier. Start at the top. Grab from the bottom, try and mix them in together. So, I think that if anything, there was too much water on that brush, but that's okay. Yeah, so we've got the nice transition going up there, and that is a lot lighter overall than what we were working with before or we could have done with the brush being a bit drier but yeah not bad for what was effectively 10 seconds or so's worth of work gives you a nice gradient then so that you can then put your, your layer on do something with right so back to foreground to fur for the other horn we nail this down. There's so much blooming, blooming horns, mate. Blooming horns on these boys. So then, skeleton horns. Pull from the dap. Chuck a bit on there. Oh, so this one's actually weirdly got more colour in it than the other one did. That's fine, you can have inconsistencies here and there. But the uh, I think that it's because I didn't catch that horn as much as I did that one with the um, dry brushing pressures, but again, not bad, not bad at all. It was a great base for us to work on. And we might as well, while we're here, dip into those lovely orky teeth that he's got there. Mmm, delicious. Isaac Yankum DDR would be very happy with this customer. 
We'll let that dry before we do the wraps there because we don't want to grab it and smudge it by accident. But we can just chuck him on here. And chuck it on here. I've got a question, Lawson, if you're still in the chat, what are you painting at the moment? You do anything fun? Um, that probably needs its own colour, that bit there. The little sash that he's got. We also need to paint the head of the dynamite gold. I think we're ready for our second layer of... Um, Seraphim Sepia on the t-shirt as well, which is nice. Right, so we'll do the Seraphim Sepia. Let uh, that contrast dry there. I mean, I could try and be really gentle about it. Yeah, that'll work. Get those wrap in there. Nice and filthy. Ooh, nearly touched it. He said while well, blatantly touching it just then. I've goosed it. I've goosed it, boys. Right. Boots. Seraphim Sepia. Ugh, metals. Boring. So boring. Then, we'll have all of the bases down. We can start layering up this bear boy. Bear boy. Hello, bear boy. If I do this, you can turn it into a tiny little stage play. Hello, everybody. It's me, Ronnie the Orc. Nice to meet you. Do you like Frey Bento's pies? I do. Delicious. And you can use the tin. They come in. It's a nice hat. Ray Bentos. Giving you what you want. Giving you what you want. There we go. That was fun, wasn't it? Community theatre. Definitely wouldn't make it in the improv world, I'll tell you that much. Right, okay. Uh... Oh, my back. Oh, Christ. Sorry, I'm just having a little stretch now. Oh, cribbity crackers. Oh, that feels good. Using the uh, top of the chair. I just snap my back in half. Delicious. Oh. They're not supposed to be perfect and balanced. This is very true. <laughs> yeah. So you're painting Night Lords and Flesh Easy Courts, but my eye keeps wandering to other projects. Oh, what other, what other sort of things are you looking at? Mainly Proxy Eldar. Maybe some Vatan! Oh, mate. You and Beanie united on the Vatan front. That would be incredible. He needs somebody to have his back when he goes to tournaments and people are like, Oh, you're playing Vatan, are you? They, they are, they're really unbalanced. No, they aren't. They, they are really balanced, you fools. That's what you have when you've only got, like, bloody ten models in your entire range. They're very cool as well. If you like StarCraft, then you love uh, Vatan by proxy. Let's get this all over his, his manky little shoe. My shoes! You'll see that there's leftover residue from when these orcs were on snow bases. If you're wondering, it's not just like weird detritus buildup from uh, living in my house. Um, but to be honest, the thought of scraping down over a hundred boys and or knobs. No. I'm okay. Let my, nub my knobs be crusty, you know what I'm saying? Right, so that goes there, he's done there, just another shoe to do, and then it's onto the head of the grenade, sash, 
and the metals. And that, and then that horrible mist thing that I did there. Hey, Slarty, how's it going, friend? Hope you're well. I do enjoy painting these old orc models so much because it's like before the boys discovered grenade pouches and all the other horrible gubbins that uh, GW insists that every single character, no matter how small, needs to bring to the table. It's like, oh, why do they have like 13 pouches each? And they can't even get away with saying, oh, it's because we built these models for people who want to just paint them. I'm pretty sure nobody wants to paint the amount of bags, cables, bits. Unless there is a... Um, a model designer who gets paid by the bag, cable, and grenade pouch. And I don't want it. Ah, oh, Stephen, thank you, mate. I appreciate that. That's really kind of you to say. Snorks! Um, it's just because I'm trying to do more of a, like, a desert, a deserty base. So I feel like if they are all consistent with that, it would just look better, I think. So, I'm just converting them very slowly over to that. Right, okay, think, Jules, think. Still looking a bit wet up on the horns. So we're going to do another coat of Seraph and Sepia over here. Then, oi, oi, oi. Just put my brush down, I've no idea where it's gone. Oh, you're taking a piss, mate, where are you? Seriously, where the, f where the hell's that gone? I think I found it. Nope, I've definitely not found it. <laughs> I've just found another one. Fair enough, whatever, okay. Yeah, the per pouch payment plan. <laughs> Have you. <laughs> do you. Um, PPPP protection? What was that for? Like back in the day? PPE, PPP, plants, all that. Have you been missold, PP something? Has your PP been, been missold? Oh, yeah, I was trying to sling a load of uh, piss on eBay. It didn't work out. It was missold, PP. Well, then you need me. Jacoby Skinray. No relation. No relation to what? Either skin or a ray. I have neither. Yep, community theatre. Please go. Funny guy. Don't worry, guys. I hear the things that I say as well sometimes. I also question why I say them. Okay. I even do a little bit of a cheeky shade on them teeth, mate. Get them right up in the gum, mate. Come back to that one later. Ah. Right now, you're looking mighty handsome, mate. Lovely, lovely boy. Add a few strokes in there. Right, so that's become a nice dirty t-shirt now, which is cool. And it helps sell the vibrancy, the other stuff there. Right, um, X, if you're still in the chat, tell me what colour you want his sash to be. His tiny little sash here. It can be uh, one of the colours we've used before, or it could be a completely different colour. Up to you, friendo. Just let me know. While I start doing the bloody metals. Ugh. I hate them so much. Worst, worst thing ever is doing metals. Fortunately, I did some space marines well over a year, some chaos space marines well over a year ago, and I have never gotten over doing trim. Hey, Sonny, how's it going? Um, we'll do 
Is he a rich boy? Let's have a think about this. What is he getting? He's probably going to have gold on that bit. He might have copper for the barrel, maybe. I'll do copper for the handle. Copper for the uh, insignia. And then rotate. I'm gonna do them silver, so I don't need to worry about them. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm getting annoyed by looking at that bloody piece of flesh there, so I may to sort that out. I'd like to call a a model. I'm well, not done, but like ninety percent finished by the time that we finish this stream. Anything else on this side? His nose ring could definitely stand to be gold. Now, if everyone was thinking, oh, why are you painting it copper? That ain't gold. Ah, this is Hashut copper, my friend. Beaten gold, and it looks great with a little highlight of Retributor armor. Whereas most uh, other golds would start at Retributor armor and then go up. We're trying to go for a dirty one. I think. Ooh, a burnt orange. Okay, yep, I can make that happen, mate. Right, have a think, Jules. Anything else on him? No, it's just going to be silvers, lead belcher, everyone's favourite. Switch down to a small airbrush here because I don't think I've got the, uh, the dexterity to do that properly. It is a really therapeutic hobby. You're totally right, Sonny. It's just, just nice, isn't it? You can kind of switch off and hyper focus at the same time. And I'm starting to see the appeal of painting even more than I do playing. Because don't get me wrong, I'm always up for a Warhammer game. Like if Beanie was to call right now I'd probably be like yeah cool fair enough mate see you in a bit but I love that I that feeling of just finishing a uniform army just having it there looking back at you like hey this is testament to all the hard effort and work ah ah wait I can see the ads ads are coming in so skip ads boom saved you there you go At least it gave me a warning this time around. That's a bit rubbish though, because I, I told it explicitly to not do that because I was going to manually put them in when I wanted to. And it's just like, no, 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 I'll do it for you still. It's like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. Shanderson. It, it is and it isn't because there are some times when I have you know what you're totally right it is a both a stressful and relaxing at the same time because I was just about to be like no 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 I, I, I really like it the only time I don't like it is and then a huge list of things that I hate to have happen to me while I'm painting sprung into my mind so I was like yeah actually no 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 you're right How's the audio volume, by the way, on this? Because if people can hear the, the music that's playing, it sounds so much like it's from Blasphemous. It, no, it won't. It wouldn't be. They wouldn't play a, a licensed piece of music on this one here. It's very nice, though. those sort of like um, echoey echoey guitars classical guitar style or f is it a flamenco guitar he says with a big question mark because I don't know that much about music all I know is it sounds bloody beautiful no did you really did you really actually get an ad I told it specifically not to do it Paul, you asshole. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's been bugging me the entire stream. I am going to go fix it. In fact, this may be what prompts me to go fix it. 
Uh, do I need to do anything else here? Check, 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 check. Shoes are fine. Weapon is fine for the moment. Uh, scanning, scanning, scanning. Now, this is the thing. The new GW models have conditioned me to look for all of the hidden pouches and bags, but they just ain't here, brother. So, I need to burn orange sash, which we'll use Griffhound orange for. And then, we should do that skin. So annoying. Fuming. Fuming that you managed to get an ad. And I specifically told it not to. But this is the thing, guys. If you do actually want to support the channel, I ain't going to pressure you. I don't do the hard show when it comes to uh, Live and Let's Die stuff. We do have merch out there designed by a brilliant artist called Richie Lee uh, that you can find in our Teespring or Spring. Uh, shop should be linked in the video in the description below maybe if not just type in live and let's dice merch and you'll get there um, but if you do want to support the channel even further you can consider becoming a member it's a super super cheap tip jar option which we've just designed to have people just be like oh look I see you I see you mate and I like what you do that all helps Ton. If you're hard up, just want to chill for a bit, I ain't gonna hold it against you. I have indeed checked out Blasphemous. One of uh, Blasphemous Two was one of my favourite games of uh, last year, and played it to death. I was lucky enough to get a early advanced copy to play, and um, played it through start to finish uh, alongside Josh, who also was playing it through, and we were just having a great old time. I actually prefer it to Blasphemous 1, if I'm honest. I think that um, the slightly easier, and I do mean that in uh, heavy quotation marks because the platforming is still very challenging and some of the enemies are very difficult, um, it just was slightly more accessible. There were more weapon options, more options for traversal and for combat. I just had a blast. It was absolutely brilliant. And I felt clever for solving some of the mystery uh, elements that were in it where they had like you need to do this but we're not going to tell you how and I was like ooh now I want to explore oh my god <sighs> I'm just getting up to grab what was I getting up to grab oh yeah um, Griffhound Orange 2 seconds friends Griffhound Orange there we go oi, 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 oi. right okay so also is there a chance my Instagram link I posted for was deleted the message is gone at least on my end um I have no idea. Can you link it again? Hmm. Link it again, and uh, I'll make sure it gets through, and I'll watch the chat. Um. Brr, 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 brr. What was this? Oh, uh, uh, Sunny says I watched you in the old WC days. Uh, do you have any thoughts on WrestleMania? I thought it was an absolute blast. Day. To get to day two, you had to get through some of the sort of foibles of day one. And my god, that payoff. I, I will try to refrain. Actually, if, you, if you're a wrestling fan, you've already watched it by now, surely. Um, the payoff, just seeing Cody finally topple Roman Reigns was just outstanding. It was a well-earned victory. Admittedly, Maybe could have come last year, but if it did, then we wouldn't have got like the Undertaker, John Cena, all of the uh, the rack coming back. It was a crazy time. But if I'm all, if I'm honest, the uh, wrestling snark in me says that the uh, the match of the entire uh, weekend was Gunther versus Sami Zayn. What a match! And the setup for the story where they're going to go forward from there is brilliant. Because you've got Chad Gable waiting in the wings. You've already highlighted that Kevin Owens is still around and still potentially friendly with uh, Sami Zayn. Gunther now is freed up to go on to a different target. And what happens to Imperium is like... It's just it's just nice. It's just nice. Were you, were you there or did you watch it live? I was very jealous of the uh, boys getting to go out there and see it because I only got to do one... WrestleMania Live, but it was just fantastic. 
Okay, so we've done all of the base coats. Let's have a think about where we're going to start working next. I think that we should bring those yellers up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab... Let's see, Bad Moon Yellow is quite light. Very vibrant. Let's get that and mix it with some Avalon Sunset. See what we get out of it. Oh, blimey. He's up again. We've also got Phalanx Yellow and Avalon. Oh yeah. Okay, so I think that we can use a combination of these to get us where we need to be. In fact, I think that Phalanx Yellow and Moon and uh, Moon Yellow are going to be quite similar, aren't they? But we can mix these two together to get what we want. Oh, nice! That'd be great. I did actually get to go and see uh, Clash of the Castle in Wales, and that was so fun. Um, Shannison, I went to, um, oh, bloody hell, uh, the one where Kofi Kingston, uh, won. God, what WrestleMania was that? Yeah, like I say, it's a long, long time ago. It's back when I still had the affiliation with What Culture, and it was like, they were begging, they were pleading for me to, well, technically, I was begging and pleading to go over there. And eventually, they relented, and I was like, yes! Success! <laughs> Good time indeed. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start tidying up these bits here. Once that's on. Start creating some natural weathering. Expand the big lines. Keep that colour coming through. Let's create a nice uniform tone. I always try and stipple around the, um, the darker recesses. I feel like it just... You can get a bit of free weathering and a bit of free shading. Do you know? As we go forward, it's going to get a bit darker because it's covering here, yeah, so we can kind of just do a bit of highlighting and then leave that as it is. Nice! These panels here we can bring, bring up and leave some shadows around the recesses. As per usual, I bloody hate painting yellow. But at least with that base colour there, you end up with a slightly better job. And now on this side here, I'm just going to put a light. In fact, I may water this down a little bit more. Let's go over the top. Leave it dark in the dark bits. We want the top of this shoulder pad to be super bright. It's going to take a few layers for us to get that uniform colour there, but it's going to look nice. It's going to look real nice when it's done. I had so many different life changes during that Roman Reigns tar run. It's kind of yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It kind of you don't think it's going. Post again. That's it. It's not showing in chat. Auto mod. Oh, that's weird. Um, send it to me on Twitter, and then I can post it into the uh, into the chat. 
Chipping it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. When the time comes, you must chip it. Chip it real good. Right. Oh, I picked up the bloody wrong brush, did I? Where is he? Now, this is the thing. They're never going to be golden demon winning models, these, but they are going to be a, a key part of my armies going forward. I want to run all of the units that I never normally run when it comes to orcs. After seeing all of those blooming crazy looking rules that they put up on the Warhammer community page, I'm just like, yep, 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 yep. I am so back in the room. It's unbelievable. So I'm just doing a really thin down layer of uh, moon yellow. Might not be able to see it much, but it's going to add a lovely lovely warmer yellow to it. And then we'll go through and do some, um, like I don't think that you can see it that well on the webcam, but it is so yellow it's almost luminous on my end. Okay, right, that all. Do, we'll let that dry and then I can come back in and start highlighting which I'll do by mixing ice yellow into the um, uh, the phalanx yellow uh, what do I want to do now then I guess I want to do the same with blues yes I do okay right so excuse me while I'm going to get my blues Let's be careful with these ones because I'm not entirely sure if I've got exact colour matches with them. Oh my god. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. Bloody knees. Uh, even type of blue would I call it? You know what? I weirdly don't think I have like a blue blue. Have I got anything in my small ultramarines pile? Prussian blue? Uh, I've got poster boy blue, which is dark. I've got EAA blue. Okay, well, let's try these out and see what we get. Oh god. Okay, right. Um okay, right, two secs, I'm just logging in to get the link. <laughs> this to the live chats then I can post this in there we go that should work have I ever thought about doing miniature painting commissions nah man I'm not good enough for that um Plus, I think I'd get, like, too stressed if it was working on stuff that isn't mine. Yeah, we can make this work. Okay, right, so, 
Which one are we going to start with? Maybe E88 Blue? Let's see what this gives us. Oh no, the nozzle is clogged. Ooh. It's actually quite light blue, that. So I'm just checking out all of the different blues that I've got. No, Prussian blue's got too much grey in. That one is very light. So maybe poster boy blue was the one I needed. that's so dark in the pot I just didn't think that it was going to be the one let's give it a try oh, you know what that might actually work we'll go in with trepidation Is significantly dark, but that's okay. Because we'll mix it up. Be the blue we want. We're not gonna half ass this. We do it we do it right. go so now we can get a nice flat blue on any bits that look slightly patchy because it is just a touch lighter than what we were working with work that into There's some natural shading for us which I believe the term is hell yeah yeah I think that I'm going to be doing um, painting streams for the foreseeable um, I just enjoy doing them a lot and I think if I can paint up stuff it's like recommended by the community then I feel like I'm directly engaging a lot more one of my biggest um, things that I struggle with because my streaming setup isn't like perfect by any means is uh, knowing what's going on in the chat at any given time whilst trying to give 100% of my focus to the game in question and uh, it can lead to a point where like either I'm missing obvious things that people are telling me or I can't like react or do something or, or even be in the moment when I'm playing the game sometimes I still like doing it, don't get me wrong and I still will go back it's just this is nice, this is just nice Now we can start building up that. Nice. Deeper under layer. Beautiful. What a lovely boy. Hello there. Nice to see you. Yeah, man. You should do... um painting commissions because you're so good at it Lawson it is hard though isn't it because it's like trying to figure out how to get all of it set up like I can now tell you a little bit of like 
because you, I don't, yeah, you were in the last week stream. Uh, the audio was really, really quiet, but I've like found out how to add in all of the filters and stuff onto um, Streamlabs. So in theory, because you and I share the same login, you should be able to log in, and have all of the same settings and uh, filters. So that means that your microphone should also get boosted in the same way. That makes sense. Cheers, Doug. I appreciate that. Uh, cheers, Doug. Oh, you're, you're a nice guy, you are. All of my orcs are Geordie because I'm tired of them being co-opted by the... Uh, by all of the Cockneys. So all the time you're like, Oh, we're going to smash you, mate. We're going to smash you, mate. Geordie orcs are the best. Geordie shork. Um, we are probably ready to put a highlight onto the yellow armor. We should probably do a wash on the, the metallic, fantastic over here. <laughs> yep, I'm going to do a quick wash on the metallic, fantastic, and then we will um, do some highlights. Back to the medium paintbrush. <laughs> Geordie Orcs, or as they are known, Geordies. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that, Lawson. If you want to as well, um, organize it so that we can do like a uh, a co-op uh, painting stream to get you back into the swing of things. Yeah, let me know. We can do it next week. Um, it'll be the last uh, stream I do before I go in for my surgery as well. So it would be quite nice to hang out and have a catch up. Um, because I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of weeks after. Because they've said recovery time could be anywhere from like... Uh, two weeks? As much as I want to do just like streaming from bed. I don't know how to entertain that would be for people. Ah, they always need the dirty damn mate. They're, they're crying out for it. Yeah, I probably will do some dirty down. But the problem is, Doug, is you know me. I'm a varnish boy. I know that that sends shivers through your spines. But, uh, I mean, you've seen the way I store my orcs. I chuck them into a big old plastic box once they're done. And I need about, I need to know that the 15 layers of varnish that I provided them with will protect them for all of their future travels. Get in there, get in there. Commission painting is incredibly tough. Very taxing because you're not painting your own models. You can't take your time. And uh, actually, the person to ask about this the most is in the chat right now. It's Doug. Um, Doug, how would you describe uh, being a commission painter? How does it feel when you're. Um, have you ever had a client that is like, I want this to look like this, and you've just been like, that will not look good. Um, and you're forcing me to use my talents effectively on a bad thing. Obviously, you don't need to name of them, because uh, yeah, so we, we don't want to harsh on people. And uh, They may even be here in this chat, which is probably where you turn around and be like, yeah, I've bloody hated painting those Sentinels of Robna. <laughs> There is a part of me that misses painting Space Marines, and that shows you how uh, long it's been since I painted them. They are boring. Let's get some more nice egg rigs on you, mate. Oh, sorry. Let's get some nice egg rigs on you. I can't, I can't say it. Lawson, record me a proper Geordie person saying, let's get some Agrax on you. I'll play it out through my phone. I read. Now let's get... I, like, I can't do it. My, my tongue immediately like forces out of position. Let's 
see the comment. What's going on there? Have I ever... Oh, being... Wait, wait, wait. This is what you would describe uh, being a commission painter is. Hashtag dead. Oh, the ad's got another one again. I, I tell you, everyone, I have turned it off. I do not know why YouTube is insisting to chuck them in. I appreciate all those that come back. Anyway. Sorry if we lose you. I just want, I just don't. The ideal dream would be for Live and Let's Dice to be so self sufficient in terms of either Patreon numbers or, um, or donations that I could turn ads off. That would be the dream. I think that's the dream of any sort of social media uh, channel, isn't it? You want to get so popular on it or successful using it, you don't need the social media channel itself. <laughs> Which is the last thing that they'd want because they don't, they don't want that. So, uh, what are we doing next then? So, we've done that, we've done that. The horns are looking nice, like. Let's pull my finger out, sort of Chaos Legion. For you guys. Oh, yes, please, mate. Oh, here we go. we go. <laughs> I don't know if people hear that. <laughs> he said, get some fucking aggrax on that. <laughs> Clients often have a picture in their head that they can't quite explain. Yeah, I imagine that's really tough. At least thanks to the good people over on the Live and Let's Dice um, Discord channel, we had a colour scheme in mind when we came to Doug <laughs> begging and grovelling for help. Please, Master Doug, will you help us out? And he was just like, oh, fine. <laughs> you embarrass me with your skills. Let me show you how it's done. Right. How's that piece of flesh that I painted up looking? Are you all like that? Uh, uh, yeah, you, you would, you'd still know this. Right, okay, I'm gonna go in with some more. What? What? Bang. Uh, Morgast bone? Is that what it is? Oh no, this is a Shabti bone. I've jumped a layer. God, what am I doing? I'm bloody mad. Best thing about being creative is uh, letting something come to life and make your own decisions on the go, and that's just not possible with clients. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I did the. I know it's on a completely different scope, but I did um, uh, video editing before I fully went on with what culture. And editing for clients was so tough because they weren't even like creative clients; they were just like wanker bankers, and they were they fancied themselves as being creatives. But they were marketing the most heinous sort of stuff possible. It's like, can you help me um, make this uh, presentation about um, crude oil engaging? No, believe it or not, I can't. Get out of my way. He's got nice looking teeth there. Lovely stuff. Ugh. Yeah, Doug is the bedrock of loud of loud. Okay then. Right, I think that the uh stuff has dried enough so that we can maybe do a edge highlight now onto the yellows, do an edge highlight on the blues, and that'll really start pulling things together for our model who really only needs like a few sort of like highlights and color top off so he's like he's definitely table ready um he's good to go he'll need like metal highlights and things tidied up but i'm pretty happy with how he's turned out so let's get some uh blue highlights in on the mix
Ooh, right, okay, steady hand, steady mind, steady hand, steady mind. See, I like doing it occasionally, just little tiny streaks down. If I can get the finest edge. Sometimes I can't. Because I just like having it so that it looks like there's a scratch that hasn't gone down to the, uh, the core of the metal yet. That has had some impact on our boy. Which I just don't think the edge is good enough on this brush anymore. Sometimes I can get it if it's like a certain angle. Do, 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 do. Sounds like we're um, in a menu for Persona 5. less now the moment that I draw attention to it. Yeah, there it is. Whoa! Really? What's the most uncommissioned thing you guys have uh, worked on? Okay, right, so we've got some small highlights. Oh, this thing, I don't think the, um, the webcams were even going to pick up. The, uh, the small highlights here, but hey, we're doing them. That's what Mork and or Gork would want. Don't leave our boys looking crusty and dusty. Oh, you know what? I've just decided what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight. I'm gonna go and make myself a little cheeky spaghetti bolognese. And, uh, Treat the actress, she's had a hard day. It when you can feel your brush touching against another element of the model. You're like, please, please tell me I wiped off all the paint or there is nothing here that can transfer from one to the other. Oh, there he is, he's got a nice little blue on him now. Alright, mate. Alright, bro. Ah, oh, yeah, man. The, what, was, what did we decide that his name was? The, the loudest knight because he was a Slaneshi demon trapped inside a Chaos Knight. Yeah, man. Absolute superstar. It's a shame that he's like, I don't know why, but he's been like priced out of like any sort of feasibility. And like I've been saying to Bean for ages now, like, I'll run him. But you've got to run a list that is like competitive level three because the amount of points I've had to sink into him. Like, it's getting to the levels where. Like, a stomper would actually be a more reasonable choice. Because at least a stomper has interactions with other orc models. Whereas this guy is just kind of like, yep, yeah, I've got some pretty decent rules, but not enough to justify a near 600 point asking price. Das Tyrant. Right, that's his second smidge layer. That's what I like calling the, uh, the one where you just put in a, a tiny, tiny bit of a really light version. It's definitely not called that, but that's what I like calling it. Right, okay, so the blues are done. Nice. Uh, so now we're going to wash that off and we're going to get straight on in and do the yellow. And then 
pretty sure that he is ready. You know, he's ready to go. I'll, I'll still do a bit on him because obviously there's still uh, some to do on um, Kamikaze's one over here. What I'll do is each week I'll do the base coats of these boys, get the armors done, and then I can just tidy them up in my own time. Cheers, bro. Oh, nice to see you. Oh, you have always been supporting to me, and I think you are great. Oh, thanks, dude. Shall we go and kill a load of humans? Yes, that sounds very enjoyable. Afterwards, would you like to go and watch the new season of Smiling Friends? Yippee! That sounds great. Community Theatre 2. I love the fact that Smiling Friends is the map, by the way. One of the funniest shows going. And one that just does not give a fuck. So weird. These two colours do not want to mix. How bizarre. Trez Watery. Okay. My most fun. Primaris Vulcan, a Primaris Vulcan Stan conversion went well. I enjoy most these days. Because, oh, well, I'm glad that you enjoy it. Because at the end of the day, that is kind of. I mean, you're, you're in it for the long haul. Oh, that's a nice yellow. That's a real nice yellow we got. Because it's so watered down, get a nice sneaky blend going on, which will then push further with the ice yellow we've got. Yep, 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 we like this, yes we do. Thank you TJ, I appreciate it. <laughs> Because I'm um, slightly colorblind with uh, reds and greens. And it does mean that when I'm. I was thinking, like, why am I so drawn to um, like lurid color clashes and big neon ones when a load of other paintings I know are like more subtle ones and um, like more washed out stuff? And it's, just, it's literally just because I can't see them unless they are really vibrant <laughs> so i've always loved this kind of like saturday morning cartoon vibe okay right so now it's time to get that ice yellow involved ice, ice. Okay, right, we're just going to do a few little dabaroonies. That's still wet. Uh, do, do, do. We use this ice very sparingly. Very bright. Don't half pull the eye. There we are. Just do the tip. No, nope, that's way too thick. Ooh. Also, did anyone see that the new um, Joker trailer dropped? Like, I am strangely keen to see it. 
know that Ewan is just hates it. I saw a tweet that he put out earlier today. He was just a, like, first one was absolute hot garbage. The fact that it got popular was really bad of us to allow it to happen. I was like, whoa, I thought the first one was pretty fun, man. But then again, everyone's got different takes on these things. The only time that I've actually like gone properly like heated on a movie take when somebody said that the uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining was an objectively bad horror film. And I was just like, just because you have heard the word objectively being used and figure that having a hot take gives you some identity, bruv. Like, <sighs> so I was like, go on then, explain why just is. What an annoying argument that is. Just is. Now I can tell you a million ways why I think it is good. You can't tell me a single reason, concrete, objectively, is bad. Yeah, I, I, that's what I thought as well, Janison. I was just like, cool, let's have a, uh, let's have another weird film. Because, um, we watched uh, Poor Things a couple of weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. Carrie did as well. And I just want more weird films, please. Weird me up, brother. Okay, right, so again, I don't think you can see most of the details in here. It's quite a shiny yellow, actually, I've just noticed here. It's almost got like a satin finish to it. That's okay, we'll um, dull it all down when the varnish hits it. But I'm happy with the yellows, I'm happy with the blues. Probably tidy up his trousers really quickly. I'll tell you what, we'll do, um, do the leather bits on that. And then it's really just going to be a case of me tidying up the skin, which I'll do for all of them. And another thing. Yeah, Shanna said it was so good. Pickle, no pickle. That's absolutely fair, my friend. I just thought that um, I, I watched it in the cinema and I just had a very pleasant time. I'm not like super um, like precious about comic book characters. I think that a lot of people had the um, had a problem with the people who championed it. Like they didn't see the... Um, this is the same sort of people that didn't see the... Uh, the satire in Helldivers 2 were the same people that were like, yeah, the Joker's amazing <laughs> and he's a person to be idolised. It's like, ew, ew. Right, tidying up the trousers. What do I need? I need Born Fang Brown, baby. Okay, right, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Born Fang Brown is here. Steel Legion Drab is here. Woo! Yeah, that's probably a very good point. <laughs> yeah, just because he's my boy doesn't mean that he uh, he likes all the same films as I do. That's absolutely fine. Uh, right, let's tidy up these trousers. Pull your pants up. Right, okay then, so what we're gonna do is put a corner of our Right, I'm gonna be bad to be I trust. I trust the process on this one. doing a light, a very light coat, just to uniform the browns, and it makes instantly his trousers look so much better for doing so.
Just a nice bit of rich brown. Nice bit of poo brown. Yeah, it's one of the things that I learned recently. There are such a thing as uh, good arguments. It's just about the compromises that you find along the way that make it good or bad. Having a disagreement with somebody about film, TV, music, whatever. It's good, you should be able to disagree with your friends about it. It's about not taking those comments personally. What you like isn't necessarily a reflection of you. Being said, I do sometimes think that great care needs to be used when talking to people about stuff that they're passionate about. They're calling something, in my eyes, calling something that somebody's really passionate about stupid. Just so harsh. Like, there's a lot of hobbies that I don't get, you know? I don't understand, and some that I really don't want to understand. But if somebody else likes them, and they don't hurt or infringe on the rights of somebody else, and they're passionate about it, good on them. Good on them for feeling comfortable enough to express that. Weather in the bag. Weather in the bag. I think that doing weathering on belts and leathers is my favourite thing to do because I'm not saying that I'm particularly good at it. It's that I get a an effect that I like the look of fairly quickly. And it's always satisfying because it, it's like the thing that you don't even really look at a model for. But if it's done well, you're like, mm, that's nice. Hey, Callum. How's it going, mate? Just gonna tidy up that. Then we can introduce some Steel Legion Drab in the mix. And that should be all of our leathers, belt buckles, and jazz done. Yeah, X, that is a great example. But it's like, I ain't gonna make you feel bad if you like something that I don't. It's like I said, just calling something stupid or having a fascination with something is what stops people from, you know, potentially using that to do something even better than just being a hobby. What I'm doing now is just dotting uh, Steel Legion Drab all the way around the leathers. So move it into frame so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm creating like a rough, uneven surface, and I'm not going across the whole thing. I've already done that with Mordfang Brown. So you create a nice wear on that. And then I'm going to get the sharpest bit that I can. Just start drawing small lines inside the lines I've already drawn with Mornfang Brown. You get these nice little like scratches. Just make the bag look all weathered. 
and it's just it's just nice. It's just a nice little thing. Sorry, I'm just gonna go quiet for a bit while I just focus on getting this done. I'm in the zone now. His belts and vouchers. I think so. Cool. Right, he's looking pretty nifty now, isn't he? From where we started to where he's come now. Not bad in the slightest. Again, I'm happy that we did the second coat of the Seraphim Sepia on that sort of that raggedy top that he had there. Um, I tell you what, I do as well. I could while well, I've got the Steel Legion Drab, because we did a. Let's tidy up some of these highlights here. I do actually. Um, so to get the models prepped in the first place, um, I dry brush. Uh. Uh, one type of grey over the entire model and then dry brush uh, a sort of mid white and then a top white um, to get that so that the, when I'm putting the inks or the contrasts, what they're called in this case um, you get that lovely thing of it fading into the recesses but the natural shading that you've done with the dry brushing gives it a bit of texture as well not everyone agrees with the method but it does work for me and that's what I like to do. Just gonna grab a few of these. Get some highlights on his trousers. And then, my friends, we need to start thinking about calling it a night because I got a bolognese that I want to make now much as I'd love to stay on here just painting all the way into the night I probably should go and spend some time with the paid actress not that many done we'll have to do something about his sash because it's a bit too dirty I like and there we'll put some highlights on that but grand scheme of things he's looking more than tabletop ready he's got a nice color scheme going on there thanks again to X for that brilliant stuff and then I can uh, start layering up the skin and other bits once we've got all five of these knobs z -z 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 armor down but there we go my friends that is in two weeks admittedly how many looks like we've done two models in two weeks we've got two very different looking orcs coming in even though the models are actually fairly similar and I'm very happy with the results that we've got in there so we just need to do some final touches on them at another point. I think that the next one that we're going to do, we've got three more left over here. I reckon that will go to, we'll get, we'll not do the guy with the horns because we've done two horns in a row so far. So maybe when Lawson and I do our potential co-op stream next week, we will take one of these and do it. Maybe we'll do this guy could be quite Fun. He's got lots of open spaces and it looks quite fun. But then again, the squig is a good one to do as well. He's got extra bits and bobs all over him. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I'll uh, leave it up to the gang, you guys, to decide when we come back next week. But we'll have, have a think about what colour schemes that you would want there because if you look at what we got so far, we could end up with a super vibrant squad of knobs doing this and that'd be great. So. That has been our stream today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope that you enjoyed it once more, just to get a bit of uh, love. I'm going to parade the orcs that I painted up in the meantime since we last painted, uh, last spoke. And he's my pride and joy at the moment. So I'm hoping that we'll get more guys like him to follow into 
into war. As it were. But until next time, my friends, take care of yourself. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you um, on Friday for the deep cut if you're going to tune in on FGS. And if you're wondering what that is, it's the Future Game Show. Go check it out. This is where I'm doing all of my gaming content pretty much on the reg. I'll flip back to the... Um, to the other camera quickly hey there it is i just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who joined in today again i know it's a bit different doing the um painting streams over playing stuff but if you liked it and you stuck around it means the world to me and the rest of the guys so thank you very much um so next week i'll be back with another painting stream business as usual with the monday night war going forward um should be a battle between rapid and beanie which is good uh they're going to be filming a fair amount while i'm sort of on recovery but i'll try and chip in with uh, live streams and stuff uh, as I, I can um but until then take care of yourself see you soon goodbye everyone have a great one bye bye, 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 bye. Thank you.